All right, this is where we started. Um, when we headed down to the Golden Egg, uh, I just want to show this as a reference point because we are changing a lot of stuff. Um, so just evolving the car, learning and everything, figuring it out, figuring out how to drive it too. Anyway, first setup, uh, let's see, at the track by Saturday night when we ran this setup, um, we had learned some, we got rid of the 100 pound spring on the left rear, put a 150 in, car got a lot better, uh, added a couple of rounds of bite to it. Um, so we did pick that bite number up from that uh, 119 pounds that we started with. We were probably up more 140 or 150 at least because I put a round and a half into the right front. On the air pressures right here, I ran softer than that and um, had some good success. I dropped that right front down to 18 pounds without a bead lock on it or anything. I didn't have any problems with it rolling over. I was just really trying to get this right front softened up. What we realized was that this is just too, it's too stiff for this type of setup we're trying to run. Um, we're wanting this car to really tie down on the right front and it just couldn't do it on that 750 spring. Um, the shock itself just isn't able to hold it down on the 750 and to be honest, it wasn't rolling over to start with as far as I wanted. It's looking at the video and stuff and I wanted the car to compress more to start with. So it's not just that the shock wasn't holding it because if it was just shock, it would have went as far as I wanted to start with and it just would have come up sooner than I wanted. That wasn't the case. It wasn't going as far as I wanted to start with at all. Needs more spring on the rear, needs less spring on the front. I wanna show y'all the rear what we did first because we also put some tethers in place. So let's check that out. All right, starting with the rear. So I did have a 175 on the right rear I have changed that and now I've got a 200 pound 16 inch spring on the right rear. Um, I may end up going even to a 225. I don't think I'd go higher than a 225 on the right rear, but we're gonna go to a 200 for now. We're gonna test those results um, going to this next setup. But yeah, I could even possibly go up another 25 pounds. On the left rear, we started with a 100, 20 inch, Went to a 150, definitely made improvement, put some more bite in the car as well, definitely made improvement with that stronger spring. This is a 175 now on the left rear, that's what we're going to, 16 inch 175, got that there. And the new tech here that, um, full disclaimer here, uh, full disclosure I'd say, is uh, I don't understand everything about it, um, but we're going to learn together. I've got tethers on both the left and the right sides. So these tie down chains right here, these are adjustable. And I don't understand everything about them and I'm learning, I'm researching, trying to work out the engineering side of it. Very open to comments y'all and feedback. A lot of people have given me a lot of information about how these work. Um, and of course, you know, on this channel, it's all about us just understanding how the street stocks work, how to make speed, you know, with these cars, um, you know, in a way to create better races and stuff. That's, that's what we're doing, creating better races, supporting the, the hobby as a whole and everything. I know these work. I know that you should be running them, um, but we got to figure them out. Here's where my mind's at with this. On this right rear right here, this, this tie down's purpose is to stop it from continuing to extend the spring out. We're not gonna have this thing tied down at ride height. It's gonna have slack in it at ride height. When the car is going into the turn and transferring weight forward, it is going to stop this right rear from continuing to unload. In my mind, my understanding of the engineering of it is that that is going to make weight move to the left as far as weight the tire sees against the surface and weight is then going to travel forward, okay? So we're shifting weight to the left and forward. That in my mind is an effect that we would want to be able to produce on a dry slick track. So where I'm at starting out with this is, I would think I would not want this hooked up or to not have it tightened up to where it's not allowing much movement coming up off of it. During a tacky heat race or qualifying, I would think I would want this to be loose or disconnected during those events. And then on a dry slick track, I believe I will want this in place. That's where I'm at starting out. Please, if you're an expert on this and you're willing to share and help our community as a whole, send me a comment, give me some feedback. I definitely appreciate it. I'm reading all of it, folks. 
On this left rear right here, starting out, the purpose of this tether is to simply keep this left rear from topping my shock out, you know, overextending, jumping a spring off, anything like that. That's where I'm starting with this. I'm not tying this down to put preload into this left rear initially, but I've got it here in place. It's got a big adjuster nut in here where I can change the length of it. And I've also got this one clamped on as well where I could make a big change in it here as well as if I needed to, but we've got it on and in place. Now, got a 175 here, 16 inch, the 100 pound spring, changed it up. I'm gonna show y'all that right quick. All right, so this 100, I built this spring pocket on this left side where that I can sit a cup in a cup. And the reason that I did that is because it lets me be able to put a preload on this 20 if I need to. So you see right here, this is a 20 inch, 100 pound, and I was running this, but I wasn't running it with any preload in it. I've got a chain on it that's tied it down. It's at 16 inches right now. So it's got like 400 pounds of preload in it the way I've got it set up. And I can switch it out. We're gonna take the car out. We're gonna initially run it with a 175, but I do wanna learn more about it. We've got some research to do on a 100 pound spring with it preloaded. I do believe that we are gonna have to put some type of preload in it. Um, I have not seen a system like this used before but my math is telling me um, that this is a good way to do this. It would be a quick way for me to be able to swap this out, put this in, and um, not as dangerous because I've got this locked in. I'm not trying to fight with the spring and put it into it. This is gonna stay in place all of the time on the spring. I take it back out, this chain just stays in place with it. So this is an option. I don't know, we're gonna run this car the next Saturday night um, at Camden Speedway in West Tennessee and we'll take this with us, but uh, we likely won't get to the testing of this. It's just gonna have to evolve over time as, as we work through this car. So this is the rear end. This is the changes we've made. We kept all our weight where we are. We're staying at about 53% rear. Um, I think everything is great there. Uh, we're at 53% left. You know, there is a possibility that I'm gonna shift some of this weight maybe from the left to the right, and we end up going to like 54% left. That could happen right now. It's not though. Um, right now we're gonna change uh, ride heights in the front, big spring changes here, see what that does. All right, that said, let's go to the front. We got a lot to do in the front too. All right, so if y'all are subscribed and got your notification bells on, you've been following along. You know, in my last video, when we were down at the Golden Egg, um, we got a lot of feedback about softening up this right front. And one of the things that we could do to soften it up is to get a, a more offset on the wheel. You know, get that wheel sticking out further has that effect, soften that spring up. And we wanted to have more adjustment at the track with it. And the easy way to have adjustment at the track is to run a long stud on my hub and then have wheel spacers. And I have lots of wheel spacers that I've accumulated. So these are these one inch wheel spacers right here. But these hubs, the way they come when I put them on new, they had um, these studs here, and like this stud right here, you know, total length, this is a three inch stud right here. Well, this three inch stud, when it's in this hub right here, even a one inch spacer is, is a little bit sketchy, um, cause you just really, you know, you don't have, you know, when you've got that sit in there and then you put a wheel on the front, you just don't have a lot of thread that you're getting a bite on there. And I'm like, well, I don't wanna just be able to run one I want to be able to run two. That was my intent all along. Reason for that. I've got all four inch offset wheels and I want to be able to make a wheel a two inch offset if I want to. Well, how do you make a two inch offset? Well, you know, two one inch spacers on a four offset wheel makes a two inch offset wheel. It's real handy and two, it's just changing this. Uh, you run into problems because if you've got staggered differences, you know, with the tires that you have on different offset wheels, you know, now you're, you're possibly introducing other issues and stuff. So I really do like running just one particular offset wheel. Another thing I want to point out, I've talked to a few people about, this is a 7377 um, Big Monty frame is what this frame is. This car has like a 62 inch track width on it, you know, on the front of it. Whereas a metric, you know, it's got like a 58 and a half, I think, or something, track width on it. And of course, when you put the Nova lowers or the aftermarket Johnsons or something, you know, you're taking that out to like a 60 inch track width, not a 62. 
So I'm running four offset wheels, but if I was on a metric with those lowers, I would be running like three inch offset wheels, okay? Because a lot of people are like, oh, I'd never run four inch offset wheels. It doesn't make any sense or whatever. Well, just don't forget, I've got more track width to start with as well. And you know, and yes, I am running spacers at well. So when, I'm, when you see me running a four inch offset wheel, and then you see a one inch spacer on it. No, that's a three inch offset's what that is. The car doesn't know the difference. All right, now how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna show you. Well, come here, there we go. So here's these aftermarket studs, like it was a three inch right there. And this one right here that I got, you know, four and a quarter inches right here, um, which is perfect. I'm putting these in. I, I wanna point out though, if you do this, if you start swapping this stuff out, you gotta really pay attention. Um, and I caught this, and I like to mess up because you can you can split a hub. But the neural head on this on this small one that came in here stock is 672. All right, that 672 is what that size is, and, and we're talking thousandths of an inch. This replacement right here is 685. If I just take and draw these into this hub the way it's been drilled, it will split and crack this hub and then you could have a catastrophic failure later because of that. So I'm going back and I've already done this one and what I did was is I took a 675 drill bit and I went back and I re-hit all of these holes and just it just took a little bit of material out but what I'm trying to do is, is I'm only trying to have like 10 thousandths extra meat in there that this neural is squeezing into. I don't want to have 20 or 30 thousandths difference between this hole and this stud. You will ruin a hub if you've got too much like that and you're dragging that in. Now you got to have some interference bite on it. Don't get me wrong because you don't want these spinning. Um, you don't want to have to turn around and take a nickel rod or something and weld it in the backside, you know, to fix it. And you can fix it. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, but anyway, I caught that. I just wanted to point that out because uh, that could have been a catastrophe. I've already done one. I'm going to do the other. And like I said, the purpose of that is because if I want to, you know, you see I've got that on there. And I can drop two on there, put a wheel on, put lug nuts on, and make a two offset wheel if I needed to. It's not a difficult process. Anyway, I've already drilled them out with a drill bit. Um, and they just slide right in. Here's the way I do them, y'all. Great big old nut and a washer. Um, you see that washer is just, it's all been up. But anyway, I make sure that I lubricate the stud and I lubricate that washer and then I just use a big old lug nut. Throw that joker on there, pull it up, and then hammer home. Five times and your rotor's done. Like I said, this, uh, like where I've got this drilled, I'll show you right quick. And you have to order these custom sized drill bits. Uh, like a lot of your racing places, they'll have these drill bits that'll be an exact size, like a 680 uh, or 675. So I've got this drilled too. I've got it drilled and it's coming in at 679. 676, 679, between there, you know, and this is six, 688. And so I've got about 10 thousandths of interference. And to me, that's perfect. And you saw how tight that was dragging up. If it was more than that, that's where you run into getting, and then they'll split right across this edge right here is where they'll split. If you split one of these hubs, replace it. Um, don't take a chance on that, y'all. But anyway, but yeah, 10,000. So make sure you're checking. Uh, now, got that out of the way. Let's talk about big changes here. Okay, so I get that spring rubber out of the way. Okay, we were running a 750 on the right front and an 850 on the left front. Too much spring. Um, you know, as I'm learning how to drive the car, uh, this car, it's, it's not a Camaro, it's not a leaf spring car. I have had to get out of my head, 
stop trying to brake and force the car in. The car needs to compress on its own. The car needs to turn on its own. I don't really need to be trying to rodeo this car um, using brakes and brake bias to force it. And it's going to take a lot softer spring to get this car to do that um, and me not be trying to rodeo handle this car. So, this is a Hyperco 550 spring. Yeah, I know. Soft. Um, this is a 550. Um, this is a like a durometer 40 spring rubber right here. Um, we are going to put a spring rubber in because we are going to be significantly compressing this spring. We want its rate to go up at a certain point. This is the rubber I'm starting with. I may change spring rubbers based on what I find. We may end up having to get a thicker spring rubber um, and more durometer as well if we need to to help this spring to hold up. So this is going in. I wanted to put a 650 on the left front, not available. They're on back order. Um, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and what we're going to do, we're going to put the 750 on the left front and we're going to run this car um, this next Saturday night uh, with a 750 on the left front. I do think, I, I think I'd be better with less split. That's going to put 200 pounds of split on this car. What's the effect on the track? Okay, weight's going forward. More spring on that left front is going to make the left front's going to see a lot more weight initially. Um, and then it's going to transfer that weight faster and harder to the right. So I think that I, the effect may be that the car is really getting over on the right front. Um, but I've got a lot of body roll in the car. I've got the car, you know, like more over on the right than the left. Um, I may not be holding the left down as much. So I may end up with more of an effect. It's going to put more rear steer in the car. There may be a situation on like a really short track where maybe you'd want that. Um, I think, you know, on a bigger track or a big wide turn, I'm not going to want the car rolled over hard, you know, with a full, you know, inch, inch and a quarter of dynamic, you know, left rear lead in the car um, where that more spring on the left side is holding it up. That's where my head's at with this. Of course, we've got to test, run the car and see what the results are. But we're going to do it nonetheless. 750 on the left front, 550 on the right front. That's how we're going to run it. We've got a 650 on order. Eventually, it's going to get made by Hyperco. I am going with them. They're not a sponsor in any way, but they're a U.S. company. They've got a factory down in Mississippi. My understanding is on that. And, um, you know, I'm going to stay with one brand of springs on this car all the way around. That's, that's what we went with. So I want the 650 as well from them. And as far as the shocks go, no changes on the shocks. Um, again, my thought process here, the 500 pound Gorilla, gorilla Fist tie down shock on the right front is enough shock um, to hold. You know, I just needed less spring for it to be able to hold so the car can get down, compress the spring up, and then the shock do its job and hold it there. The only thing um, that I could see is it is a 500 130 and so the question is is as i get softer on this spring does this 130 need to go up um, do i need more compression as well to help uh calm the front of the car down and get this to work possibly uh we're gonna have to test and see we're gonna have to run it um and see where we're at and then you know possibly have another shock made um for the front it may be that i have to switch out Maybe this is a good shock on a dry slick, even with this soft of spring. But if I get on a, a tackier heavy track, maybe I do need a, spring, a, a shock that's got the same rebound, but I need more compression so that it can deal with a lot of ruts or bumps or something. We've just got to learn as we go. Um, and I'm looking for feedback. Those of y'all that are experienced in this and, you know, you've seen it and you've got results of it. Hey, leave us a comment. We're all learning in this. All right, so we're gonna get these springs on. We're gonna set our ride heights and everything. We're gonna get these shocks unhooked. These are all gas shocks. We're gonna get them back unhooked, and then we're gonna get this thing back on the scales. We're gonna see what these numbers are that we're gonna take this car to the track with next Saturday night. We're getting close to ready to scale, so let's check where we're at here. Of course, finished up, got the hubs back on, put a one inch spacer on the right front and on the left front. So now those are like three off wheels on the front there. Um, so I got the 550 spring in and I had to run, of course I had to run the jack down quite a bit. I'm getting this back to about 10 degrees right here. That's going to get my ride height somewhere around nine inches to the center of the bolt is what I'm after here. Definitely got to have some ride height here for this spring so it can work. All right. 
Got that one in. Of course, you see the shocks are off. It's all gas shocks on the car. We're fixing to scale it, so I want those off the car. Um, two of them completely off on the front because they'd just be in the way. They'd be pushing up and binding up into stuff. All right, I think I've got my front where I need it on the ride heights. Um, of course, I was bringing it up to get my 40 inches on the deck height back here that is with me in the car. So I've actually got this. It's at about 40 and a half right now, right here. Of course, this is going to sit down quite a bit. I want to show you under the car, y'all. All right, y'all, you see I've got the, the shocks unhooked and everything. Now, my tether's right here. I am going to adjust these links up when we get completely done. I'll probably take links out or adjust up or screw the nuts up, whatever I need to. So these aren't in their final location. Um, I did want to show you, when you're changing springs out and making major changes in ride heights and everything else, um, you know, before I ever even put it on the scales, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go old school and just put a jack under the center and just make sure that I've got left rear bite in the car. Because if I've got negative bite in the car, I don't have any left rear bite in the car, you know, I'm way off on my springs where I need my jacks at anyway. So I've got to fix that. So first thing I do is just make sure that my right wheel breaks the ground before my left. You know, so my right wheels broke the ground about a half inch over here. So I know I've got left rear bite in this car because if I didn't have any bite in the car, I mean, I'm not in the car, obviously, it's gonna be a lot more bite than this. But if I didn't have any bite in the car, I know I'm way off on my spring table and I gotta work on that until I get some left rear bite in the car. Otherwise, I'm on the jacks, uh, I'm on the scales trying to finish up and I'm just way off and turning on everything um, and, and chasing it. So that's one thing that I'll do there. So like, I know, I know I'm close. You know, I may need to do a little more, a little less, but I'm not gonna have to turn on screws all over the car trying to get it straightened out. So. I'm gonna scale it without my front fenders and stuff on there. So I'm probably gonna be turning on these jacks and then I gotta put the shocks and everything back on. But. climb in the car here on the scales and what that turned out to be was about 90 pounds of left rear bike all right so based on what I've learned from the track and everything like when I went to a stronger stiffer spring um, you know I definitely rolled that bike up to like 150 pounds and it just was not a problem the car was getting better I think I could have put even more bike in the car changing the springs around making the, the back stiffer um, and the front softer so the stiffer springs on the back means that they're going to release more weight as they unload because it's a greater rate per inch um, so i'm very comfortable let's put some more bite in this car because now when the left raises an inch you know you gotta think about this when you raise an inch with a 100 pound spring you've only released 100 pounds you know of of spring load on that tire but like with a 175 on the left rear when i raise one inch i've released 175 pounds of spring load on the tire um so i'm thinking that we need to take this bike number and go from like 90 pounds let's go on up towards 200 pounds we uh i ended up 175 really looked right when i got to 175 pounds bike i stopped there i may still take it to 200 um, at the track or something depending on what i learned we stopped at 175 pounds of bike. Uh, food for thought, just wanna let you know, that traction shock, I just hooked it back up just to see how much 
it um, skews the numbers and everything. When I hooked up the left rear traction shock, it's got like 300 something pounds of nitrogen in it. Uh, it took the bite up on the left rear another 35 pounds. So, you know, the reason you unhook the gas shocks like that, especially when we got all that gas pressure in them, is because they are flat out um, adding spring to your car. Um, but that's not on the track how it works. You know, when I'm in the process of releasing, you know, it's got some uh, rebound in it that's holding, you know, um, that as it's coming off. So you do need to unhook it. You don't need to consider it part of your spring rate package for your biting stuff. Um, yeah, so it took it from like 175 to 210 just by hooking that one shock up. So just be aware of that. That's why you unhook um, these high pressure gas shocks. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna put all the shocks back on it and button it up and then get the ride height numbers. We're gonna put everything on the board and then we'll recap right quick and this will be over. All right, so our second setup, I'm gonna say it's promising. Here's, here's what's going on. Here's the numbers for you if you're into the details. Um, air pressure, like I said, I had softened the car up. This is softer than I've ever ran, but it was really working good. Tire temperatures were right too. So I went left front at 15, left rear at 13, right front at 18, and right rear at 16. That's on H500 tires. That was working well at Why Not, um, or excuse me, Magnolia Motor Speedway. And uh, anyway, tires, the wear on them looked good. Everything looked great. So I'm gonna see if that's gonna continue to work um, and try to learn from it. As far as the springs go, 750 on the left front, 550 on the right front, a 175 on the left rear and a 200 on the right rear. Um, how does that scale out with me in the car? You see the numbers there. All right, so there's my number, 712 and 688 on the front. You see that 900 and 725. I ended up at 175. Everything was looking right. I said, let's go with this. Um, I'd originally thought about 200. I may end up still going to 200 or further, but we're gonna start right here um, with 175 pounds of bite. There's the actual percentage numbers. How does that work out? A left side percentage of 53.3 is what the car is showing. A rear percentage of 53.7. Um, my bite is 175, total weight 300, or 3,025 pounds. Of course, I have to weigh 3,000 pounds because I have an open two barrel style motor for the crate racing USA class. Ride heights changed quite a bit in this process. I had a problem that I didn't realize that I needed to address. Um, well, I did realize it um, as I went along, but anyway, check it out. Left front at nine and three quarters and the right front at nine and five eighths. Now I'm not in the car for this. I don't have the ability to get the weight back in the car for me to do it and do this part of it. Um, so this is no driver. So when I get back in the car, the car is gonna sit down on the left side. Okay, so this nine and three quarters is gonna drop down below that nine and five eighths with me in the car, just be aware. On the rear, I had flattened the car out um, and was running way low on my rear ride heights. I was concerned about deck height and stuff um, and what the car was doing. And I ended up, um, you know, I had these over an inch too low. I've got the car up now where that it's right at 40 inches deck height with me in the car just to pass tech. And when I look at the front bolt going through the lower control arm into the frame on the rear, I'm at 11 and a half inches on the left um, front bolt and I'm at 11 and a quarter inches on the right front bolt for it. And then like I said, on the front, that's the center of the front bolt going through the lower control arm into the frame. Um, and so I put a lot of rake. I'd originally designed this car for it to have um, about two degrees of rake and for this rear to be up, you know, frame to be up about two inches from where the front is. And I got it back into it how it's supposed to be. I didn't have this where it was supposed to be. And that was possibly hurting me on my car's dynamic rear steer and hurting me on the car's ability to get the weight transferred and over and onto the front of the car, um, entering into the turn and keeping it there through the turn. Because remember, the lower the back of the car is, um, the harder it's gonna get uh, be for me to get that car to torque up, you know, and use the torque of the engine in order to push the rear end up and push the weight forward. Um, you know, lower that is, harder that is to do. So that right there was hurting me, y'all. Got that back where it was supposed to be. This is my next setup. I'm gonna take this up to Camden and try it out. 
Uh, I'm hoping the track will be slick and smooth where I can really see what this is going to do and we'll go from there. Yeah, I know we had about a two week delay after our Magnolia Motor Speedway before we got to this next setup and everything, but I ain't gonna lie to you. It was cold down there, it was a little bit rainy. I got sick as a dog for about two weeks and I had to get over that so we could get back in the shop, get back to work. But we are on it now. We've already booked our rooms for Cherokee Speedway over in Gaffney, South Carolina. I think that's the next Ultimate Street Stock Series race. We're gonna be at that. And I am hoping we're gonna have this car where we need it for us to be competitive in that race. That's what it's all about. See you next time.